so my wife broke down in tears yesterday and I went and asked her what's up and I got the typical response to begin with, you know, mm. nothing, nothing, nothing's the matter, just leave me alone, mm. like what does it matter, what do you care? And I kind of hung about and I gave her a hug even though she was tense and she mm. didn't really want it and <coughs> maybe I shouldn't have hugged her, but <laughs> anyway I did, I stayed there with my arms around her and I felt her soften and eventually she, she let it all out and she said, I'm sick and tired of this, I'm sick and tired of this life, I've got nothing, I'm 36 years old and every every choice I seem to make goes wrong and this relationship's going wrong and I'm just tired and I feel alone, I've got no friends and she kind of just let all this out <clears throat> and I said thank you, thank you for telling me this. And I'm so sorry to hear that brother, welcome to the club. What is up, Yam Squad? Welcome to another video. Today we got an atomic bomb of a video. And if you stay till the end, we got a little surprise for you. Enjoy. So in November, I decided I no longer wanted to be a responsible parent and I my kids. <laughs> I was just tired of being responsible and caring for them. I felt like I was too young and I wanted to go out there and experience life and- What? Having a child is like having a Gucci bag. I don't need kids. Oh God. I started dating someone else, so it just didn't fit with my new lifestyle. And I didn't have anything to worry about because the other parent is a very responsible parent. But now I'm here because... This must be scripted. There's no... <laughs> There's no way. There's no way that she just said that. Now I'm in child support. And to top it off, I'm really pissed off that I took care of them all the way up to November. And I couldn't claim them on my taxes because the other parent had already claimed them. What in the world is going on with this world? I couldn't believe my eyes. And you know the craziest thing is that... It's not like having a little chihuahua which you can just take around and give it away when you don't want it. It's a kid. It's a child. Unfortunately, men tend to do this a lot. They just tend to walk off and pretend that those kids never existed. They don't want to pay child support. And it... She does have a point that there are a lot of deadbeat dads, but that, that does, that's not a valid reason to get rid of your kids. It's almost like it's okay, you know, if you're a guy and you do that. But the minute a girl does that, you know, oh my gosh, I'm sure you wanted to kill me for the first 30, 40 seconds of this video. And I just want to bring awareness to this. This is a horrible problem that I'm seeing more and more. I much child support. And one of the biggest things is that I see that a lot of men, they just can turn their backs on, on a whole responsibility that you created. You're a bad mother. Nursey, nursey. Mm. You want a nursey. Now the viewer question which I had for you guys was how did you find out that they were cheating on you? 20% of you guys answered. They confessed it to me. I think that that's the best way to go if I'm being honest. They have some dignity at least left in my eyes because they felt really bad about it and they confessed. So that's, that's the best way to do it. 10% of you said you went through their phones. So you found out through going through the phone. Ah, sorry to hear that, but at least a lot of you guys are not looking through your girlfriend's phone, so that's good. And 30% uh, of you guys said, a friend told you. Now, when a friend tells you this, this it's just horrible. Uh, because you know the friend probably knew about it maybe saw them if it's not your friend which they're cheating with then it will be a little bit effed up the worst one this is like the worst thing to catch them in the act uh, I'm very interested to find out the people which caught them like because this is 40% the people which caught them in the act did you catch them at home and just like the booty blaster 3000 Blast the like button, leave a comment because it really helps us out in the algorithm. And let's get straight back to the video. Criminals often resort to violent tactics in an attempt to escape the police. Mm. But what happens when the suspect tries flirting with the officer to avoid jail time? Here are three women who got caught red-handed flirting with the cops. Starting with Jenna Maldonado, who was pulled over by an officer due to a Jenna Amelderado to a suspicion of a possible mm. DUI situation. Little did the officer know that this encounter was about to become one of the most hilarious moments of his career. If you were a police officer, would you abuse your power? Would you, you know, give them a little bit on the side? Leave it in the comment section. You're gonna put it in my mouth. I'll put it in your mouth. 
It all began quite uneventfully as the officer checked Jenna's license and registration. Okay. He inquired about the reason behind her lane swerving without using signals. In response, Jenna remained remarkably composed and answered with brutal honesty. Maybe that was a side effect of the one beer she had drunk earlier. Went over the line. I will tell you I don't ever signal. Okay. She's drunk. You can hear it in her voice. She's drunk. She's had a few too many glasses. Okay. So that is an honest thing, but okay. I don't ever signal. Uh, there's only you in the car. How much did you drink today? Uh, earlier. How much was, how much was there? I a beer earlier. Just one beer? About a beer. About a beer? About a beer. So the, was, it, was it one beer or was it more than one beer? About a bear. Jenna was surprisingly open with the officer, answering his questions as if she were completely innocent. She even switched to a higher pitched voice, a common sign of women's attraction. Speaking with a higher voice pitch when talking to men can be a tool to reduce the amount of mating effort that women expend to attract and retain preferred mates. In addition to that, Jenna kept smiling at the officer's face throughout the whole reaction test. It's reasonable to suggest that the officer and Jenna appeared to have a notable chemistry. Interestingly, the subtle hints of attraction seemed to intensify between them as they continued their interaction. So, I have, uh, sorry. I literally feel like I have a... Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. It's bothering me. Thank you. Okay, so. Bro, he can't contain himself. He's like, yeah, yeah, let me help you out there. Let me just, uh, uh, inappropriate police officer doing some inappropriate shit. You're not married. Why not? I was once before. Yeah? Yeah, no, no more. What's life, life happens. How old are you? How, how do you think I am? 42. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm almost 50. Until this point, Jenna and the officer remained within acceptable boundaries. However, the situation took a significant turn when it was time to collect Jenna's breath sample. What you're gonna do is you take a deep breath and blow like a balloon. Don't stop blowing until I tell you to. You're gonna put it in my mouth. I'll put it in your mouth. Oh. <laughs> Are you gonna put it in my mouth? Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm gonna do, bitch. I'm gonna put it in your mouth. Oh my god. Okay, tell me when. Whenever you're ready. You keep stopping. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on, Jenna. You got this. Take a deep breath and blow. Oh, no, it's not that. It's funny. It's what you're saying. What, what do you want to say? Keep going. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> okay, take a deep breath Sorry. and blow. One big breath. <laughs> nope, not hard enough. <laughs> Good. Harder. Keep that tone going. Harder. <laughs> what the f is this? This is not a YouTube video. This is more like a. Something that I started considering as a married woman is why is it that random people that I don't even know get to see me and smell me at my best, but it's my husband who sees me after it's been a long day and I'm smelling like it's been a long day. So I started considering readjusting the time that I shower and do my full grooming routine. As it stands now, I take my showers in the evening. I'll shower, I'll put on my creams, I'll put on my perfumes, deodorant, fragrance, perfume, brush my teeth, all of that. And so I'm presenting my absolute best for my husband because if I'm just gonna be honest and we're just gonna be, you know, like upfront. For married couples, most of the time, if you guys have a busy schedule, you guys are working, you have children, most of the time sex is going to occur in the evening or first thing in the morning. I see a lot of talk on this app that like, oh, if he abuses you, that doesn't mean that you should take him away from the, the father. And I think that's just loads of garbage, honestly. Somebody who sits there and puts down the mother and calls them names and makes her life really hard and just absolutely tries to terrorize them, why would you want? But you chose the guy. This is the guy which you chose to be your baby daddy. I don't understand that somebody like that for your kids to adult. like make that make sense because in my opinion that says so much about the kind of character that they embody 
right? Then why did you have sex? I hate Sundays. <laughs> I hate Sundays. I have ever since I got divorced, ever since we separated. Um, not because that's the day my children come home, um, but also because of that. Like, I'm thrilled to see them every time. I'm happy that they're home. I miss them when they're not here. Um, but we gotta hear the but. But when they come home, they don't want. To. They don't want to. They want to stay with the dad. Because, he's because being with dad is <laughs> way more fun. <laughs> I'm just saying, being with dad sometimes can be so much fun. Mom, you know, has you know, she has her, she has her things. But dad, dad is that is the bomb, man. Hanging out with dad is like you know, it's like going on a vacation. He's a fun parent. He's the parent that gets to do all the nice things. I'm the boring when I take them to school. You know, I make sure they get in the healthy meals all week. Make sure they go to every appointment, all of the boring stuff. You should never compare yourself to somebody else. You're doing the most important thing there. I do none of the fun stuff except in the holidays. And they never want to come home. And I hate Sundays for it. Can't stand it. Because even though I know they don't they don't mean anything by it, they're not like I hate you, mummy, you know. Um it's just the fact that I want daddy, I want to stay with daddy, I want to live with daddy. It's so hurtful when I know I'm bending over backwards for them. Um, and I don't expect anything back from them. I don't expect them to thank me or God, anything like that. None of that. But it does hurt. It still hurts. And I'm pretty sure it's always going to hurt. I agree with her there. You know, sometimes you do things for people and they don't really appreciate you. But I don't think she should view it that way. It's her kid. Uh, having kids is maybe one of the best things that you can ever do in your life. So, yeah, I mean, you're going to get times when they don't appreciate you, but it's like having a pet, you know. I remember I had a dog before, uh, a white German Shepherd, and, you know, sometimes we would fight, you know. Sometimes we would go through things where he doesn't want to eat or he doesn't want to do things. And some, some days it's raining and I got to go out and I got to take him out and, you know, he's, he's being fussy or he's fussing that day and it's raining and he had he had like this white fur and I remember he would walk and he would get all muddy and all dirty and he loved to jump in like the mud and everything and I'll think like why are you doing this and then I gotta that's that's after work and then I gotta take care of that and then I come home and so you know it was it was very frustrating but uh, once he passed away, I was like, oh, you know, the, you, you regret that you did not get more of that time. A lot of men right now mm. act like women. Oh. And they just want more. Bring back the patriarchy. Ay, 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 I want to stay ay. at home. <laughs> I want to take care of my kids. What do you mean buy you flowers? What do you mean pay for dinner? <laughs> what do you mean 50 50? Praise the Lord. I don't believe in that. I think I'm not going to be dressing all slutty and like having Instagram. If I found the one and he gives me everything I need, he doesn't even have to ask me for that. I already did it. I like this one. You would delete without it? Him, oh, yeah, for sure. Without him even having to ask. I what about he wants to every time? Yeah. Praise the Lord. I feel good. Come back home. There's a God somewhere. That one's that one's wifey right there. Turn around, ladies, for me, please. You know there's a God who sits on high. I think I'm in love. Another day. Another reminder that it does not ever get better. Like ever. They break you in a way that no other person in the world could. But you still love them. It's been less than 24 hours and I'm a mess. This is hard. I think they watch each other and they are trying to emulate each other when it comes to who can who can be sadder in my car. I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna make a video in my car. Why are you sitting in your car? What is the purpose of filming a video when you're sad? It's not gonna help you in any way. Why do it? Today, we will review this modern woman who falls into a deep depression after deciding to leave her 15-year-old marriage. Let's start by understanding the real reason her marriage ended. Do you admit that you're crazy? If I'm completely honest, yes. I've been called crazy several times in relationships. I'm also telling you that the reason why I was called crazy was in a direct reaction from a specific action that occurred. There were times I overreacted. 
For sure. I've never gotten crazy in a relationship, but I've gotten manipulative. I was together with this girl, right? Loved her a lot. This was maybe, what, five, six years ago. And we had a great relationship, right? And then I started noticing like something was weird in the relationship. And so I, uh, I started checking her phone, right? When she was sleeping late at night, I started checking her phone, checking her phone. Then I saw that she was messaging this guy, right? And this was close to my birthday, right? I let everything be, didn't say anything. And when we were on our way to her parents' place, I confronted her about it, right? And she was like, no, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. I'm not, okay. I said, okay. So then I asked her, if you're not doing anything and if you say that I should trust you 100% and if you're saying that this is the reason why I can't trust you this and that then let me call the person right let me call the person and see what kind of relationship you guys have so I call the person right so the first thing that she says when we're driving in the car she says oh Yambo is on speaker right and that was all I needed to know. But what did I do? I let the situation be. I said, fine, I don't know if you cheated or not, but I'm gonna have to call it quits. Two, three months later, I found out that she was with this guy. She was gaslighting me the whole time, right? And lying about so many things. And that's how you should think sometimes. Usually the people which are gaslighting you are people like this. But as a full grown woman, I've established that many of those circumstances was due because I stood up for myself. I expressed my feelings, often matching the energy that was given to me first. Men like to throw that word around. So if my boundaries and assertiveness makes me crazy, then yeah, I'm f crazy. This woman definitely doesn't take any accountability mm. for her actions. Mm. She admitted being crazy, but then justify it by playing the victim card. Here's some more proof on why her marriage didn't work. Please remember that your kids are learning and watching and discovering how they will ultimately allow themselves to be treated in the future by a partner. Not all people need to know all the time everything about you. And this is the dangerous thing that I think about TikTok, right? It's, it has made it so easy for you to just lift the camera and start filming and start talking. Blah, 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 blah. You're not even really thinking, right? It used to be like this before. You evolve a skill. You become really good at that skill and then you get rewarded for it. And there are people like moms on TikTok. Oh, grandma's on TikTok. She can do this on TikTok and get her validation. And it's fake validation because most of these people, it doesn't lead to any income. It doesn't lead to you making any money off it. Most of the people on TikTok are just sitting and complaining about, oh, my life sucks and I don't, I, there's nothing that I can do about it and this and that. Yes, you're at home complaining. As I scroll through TikTok, I think I finally established why it is that I am and will remain single. I think I have a type, a type that for whatever reason, it is just built in me that it is the only kind of man I find attractive, period. I was married to this type of man for a very long time and we all know how that ended. <laughs> the type is as follows, always tall. Like always taller than I am. Bearded, exceptionally athletic, an all in all rugged man, like a Grizzly Adams man. The reason why this sucks is because I hate all of it. I will I hate doing those things. I hate I hate it. Hiking? No, thank you. Mountain climbing? No. Hunting? Hiking? No thank you. Exercising? No thank you. Eating donuts? Yes. She wants a top tier man like they all do, but doesn't want to do any work on getting or keeping a man like that. We can all imagine what her husband went through during those 15 years of marriage. A lot of people will think that I put myself in this position or that that is my own fault, that I, my life is the way it is. Let me assure you that I've spent the last 20 years of my life working really hard to get to a place that I could be independent and support my kids, okay? I'll start with that. I put myself through school three separate times, okay? I put myself in enormous student debt to be able to provide and have a good career. I was diagnosed with a life-changing illness that I refuse to let it affect my life so that I don't have to be on age for the rest of my life and I can make money myself. I made $1,500 this month at work. 
I can't pay my rent. I can't buy groceries. I've been using the food bank like a fucking loser. I don't. I can't do anything. How is this okay? Twenty years of your life just wasted. I've been working twenty years. I know so much, and I've been working, and I've been failing at it. Listen, if I do something for a year, maybe what six months, right? I try it and I'm not getting any results. Then I think to myself, okay, maybe I should change the method. They say what? Insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting the same result. Okay, so what do you want? But I don't think I have anything. I need anything. Okay, but what is the satanic ritual for? To do what? This will be news to me. You don't know why you're summoning the Dark Lord? Yeah, I don't know. Oh my god, you're fucking weird. You guessed it right. Her daughter is doing drugs just like her mother. Instead of focusing on being a parent and discipline her child, she is focusing on being the cool mom. Daughter, quick question. Would you consider me a cool mom? Am I, co am I a cool mom? Are we teenagers together? Are we the same age? I said, yeah. Oh, I guess I am. This woman destroyed her daughter's life so much to the point that the state had to intervene and move the daughter to go live with her father for rehabilitation. Just a quick rundown of what's going on right now is my daughter went to go live with her dad for an undisclosed amount of time because financially I'm not doing good and um, she's fallen into some hard times on her, in her, within herself and she needs to go and get clean and get healthy and learn to thrive in a place where she knows no one um, aside from her father. I have been away from my daughter for approximately six months of her entire 16 years on earth. I knew a girl like this when we were growing up, went to school with her. She was the hottest girl, the hottest girl. And I remember I wanted this girl so bad. I used to try to text her, I used to try to, oh, like, you know, let's try to hang out, let's talk, like, I was on her so much, you know, growing up. And I remember she started getting attention, and then it was just the time when we started drinking, right? And I was, you know, church boy, always going to church on Fridays, doing all of that. And I saw her transition from this beautiful girl, like one of the hottest women, right, into just like a drunk. I... We stopped going to school together because I went to another school and she went to another school. Then I met her, what, I met her maybe six years later. She had lost, like the beauty was gone. She had lost everything and she was like, oh, I'm getting married, oh! I was like, hey, that's, that's great, like, oh. Bro, this girl used to be so hot. And now, now, if you look at this girl, she looks exactly like this. She looks exactly like her. How I start every single day of my life. This is very interesting, right? Your words becomes things. If you say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to become the greatest artist of all time. I'm going to become the biggest YouTuber. I'm going to become this. You will become it. But if you say, I suck, I, I'm a loser, no one likes me, I'm ugly, then you are. Affirmations are very, very important. Think right, have the right mentality. That's very important in life. Congratulations for watching this video to the end. Within this video, I've hidden the name of my dog. Whoever can comment the name of my dog in the comment section wins a mystery gift. Good luck.